Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another chainmail tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to do the Japanese six in one. Ooh. This, to me personally, is a hellish weave <laughs> that is not for the faint of heart. The Japanese six in one can also be done as a 12 in one, um, but it is also commonly referred to as an oriental weave, but something about that just doesn't really sit right with me. So it is also commonly referred to as a Japanese six in one or 12 in one, depending on what you're doing. And this is what it looks like. Um, it's sort of got this more open weave where you've got your larger flat rings all sitting on the same plane um, and then they're connected by a smaller ring. This tutorial is made in partnership with The Ring Lord, so all of my supplies that I've used today are from TheRingLord.com. For the large rings, I am using a 16 gauge 5 16th inch ring, and for the smaller rings, these are a 19 gauge 5 32nd inch ring. I will have a code on the screen with a discount for these specific sizes so you can make your own project if you want. Otherwise, let's get to it! So I am actually making this specific piece for uh, Pride Month. It's June. Hey. I'm a bisexual lady, so I'm doing um, the Bi Pride flag. And I figured while I'm working on it, this would be a perfect opportunity to show you guys how to do it. I've got a big chunk left here that I still need to work on. Um, so I'll be adding to this today, but also like showing you what I'm doing. Um, I also do want to mention that I have never actually watched a tutorial on this weave, so I have no idea if this is the correct way to do it. This is kind of just like what I have figured out along the way. This is a project that I did um, a couple of years ago, and it's very small, but this is truly one of the most time intensive projects I have ever done in my chain mailing uh, career. This is a Japanese 12 in one. So for every one large ring, it has 12 small rings connected around it. Okay, if you've watched my videos, um, you will know that I am big on doing my prep work first. I do not like to have to stop a million times and prep throughout the way. The project I'm working on right now is kind of unavoidable because it's so big. I've had to take a lot of stops to prep rings. For this weave, I start by opening all of my large rings. Don't need a crazy open, just something that you can, you know, you can work with it. Once you have a nice big stack of open rings, we can move on to the bane of my existence, these little rings. I've already prepped a bunch, but I will just show you what I'm doing here. They're, they're so tiny. They're honestly like really hard to work with just because they're so small. It's like hard to hard to get a grip on them. But for these ones, these are all getting closed. Like I've said in previous videos, everything that comes from the Ring Lord, the way that the rings are cut, they all sort of come a little offset and a little bit open. So it's this is very tedious and it feels like such a small difference, but you really do need to close all of these little rings. This is the part that is so time intensive. It's not even really connecting everything. It's closing these little rings. Get yourself a big chunk of closed rings. Since we are doing a six in one, everything that I will be talking about will have be in reference of six. But if you do feel like going through the pain and torment and suffering of doing a 12 in one, obviously everything would just be doubled. So keep that in mind if that's what you feel like doing. To start, I'm going to take one ring and I'm gonna loop six of these little rings on it. Six of my small rings on my one big ring and I'm gonna close that up. The important thing to keep in mind when doing this weave is just remembering that every single ring or every single big ring has six little rings around it. So it's pretty easy to keep track like of where you're at in your progress. And you can kind of spread out in whatever direction you want. The way that this weave works, you can kind of make any shape out of it since you're working on like more of a 2D dimension. You can go in lines, you could make triangles, you can kind of work in whatever shape that you want. So I've got my one ring with six on it. I'm gonna take my next big ring. This big ring will only connect to another big ring by one small ring. So my next big ring will only have five of the little rings on it because your sixth one is the one that's connecting both of them. So now technically they both do have six rings around them, but they're sharing one of them, right? So now you've got your first two connected. 
And then you kind of just continue. I'll make like a little circle around. So now this ring is going to connect to both of these. So now this one only needs four little rings on it because the fifth and the sixth ring are already on these two like that. So everything still has six rings on it. And you just work your way around like that. So again, taking a big one, this won't connect to both of these. So I just need four on this one. And you're always connecting to the two that are like closest to each other because I wouldn't pull from, let me, well, let me zoom you in, hang on. So you're always gonna be pulling from the two like closest to each other. I couldn't connect this ring over to this one because then these two don't have a chance to latch on to anything else. I've got four on this one and then five and six are already attached to these two. I'm still looking at it like this is my center ring. So I'm just going a full loop around it. Four on this one. And then pulling from the next available on this ring and the next available on this center ring. And we have two more because again, every, it's all in sixes. So this middle ring will have six big rings around it. Next available and next available. To close out this little flower, this little honeycomb shape. So this final big ring that's going in is connecting to all three of these. So now this one only needs three little rings on it because four, five, and six are already in the loop. And you kind of just apply that logic again into like whatever shape that you're creating. This is exactly how I started this giant piece, um, but I just sort of extended it into rows because that's a little bit easier to work on than going like spiraling <laughs> from this shape. Um, so like I just extended this, you know, a few this way until I have this giant shape. So you can kind of see this honeycomb shape like everywhere in here, it's all the same. So it would be easy to just like insert this little cluster into this piece and fill in the gaps. So I'll show you what it looks like to just build off of this row. Especially now that I'm working in this row format, it's very repetitive because um, I need three every time because just the way it's laid out, I'm always connecting to three other rings. So I put three on my big hook and then one, two, three. And now this ring has six on it again. And I just am adding now to this little row of rings. And you just, you just keep doing that. I've put about, <laughs> ooh, geez, I've put at least 50 hours of work into this. Um, I was trying to get it done for the first day of Pride Month, but I missed it because it's been taking so long and I vastly underestimated. I was trying to make a dress out of this piece and that became laughably undoable <laughs> when I started getting going on it. I feel like having having it in this row format, you can kind of see your like next available a little bit easier. Three on and then you're going into the next available on this one. There's only one available on this one in the center and the next available on that last one. It is also important to keep in mind like the direction that your large ring is looping through. You have to like stay within the, the direction that all of these rings are already facing. Like I couldn't go this way through this one and then try to go down through this one. I'll, sh I'll close it and show you what that would look like. It's like all, you can sort of see how it's pulling funny on it because you've got your large ring going through two different directions of the small rings. Take that out, show you the proper way. You just continue through all the same direction. And then now when I pull on that ring, you're not seeing that like awkward tension on it. That's, that's basically all you do. If you have, if you're doing like an edge or something where you don't want there to be these excess rings on it, you would just account for that in your attachments. So say I wanted this to be like my edge right here for whatever reason, I would just 
it would only have one connected to it. So I would just put one on it. I would connect to my three like normal. And okay, again, saying this is the edge, I would just put one on this one. And then this is the one that it's connecting to that's left over. So that ring still is getting used, but then it doesn't have any anything dangling off off the edge of it. So that would look like a more clean edge. That's how I did the top of this piece. So this is the piece that's running across my chest and this doesn't have any like extra rings along the top. This piece is getting so close to done. I finally feel like I'm like home stretch. <laughs> but I think once this is done, this will be around the 10,000 ring mark. It's a pretty simple weave to do, but just be wary of how time intensive it is. Um, but look at this thing, it just goes on forever. <laughs> I need to like loop it close and then attach the straps to the back and it will be done. So hopefully by the time you're seeing this tutorial up, I have like a cute picture on my Instagram of this being complete. This is the finished top. This video isn't technically a tutorial for this top, but if you know how to make the Japanese six in one, you can figure out how to make this. It's a big rectangle, two little rectangles, and it's so cute. Happy Pride. If you make anything out of it, I would love to see it. Tag me on Instagram or TikTok. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.